Hey, how's it going? I'm doing well. How are you? It seems like you're busy doing a million things. Oh, yes, I'm good. It could have been better, but I'm better than getting there. That's good. So for our listeners who are not as familiar with you, let me introduce you. Kanye Sesser was born without legs, but that hasn't stopped her from learning to skateboard, model for the likes of Nike, Billabong, and Rip Curl Girl. So the 26-year-old celebrity is determined to lead an, an ordinary life instead of a wheelchair Kanye, whose model is no legs, no limits, uses a skateboard to get around and also walks on her hand. Um, Kanye's um, talents include sports, acting, modeling, and serving as a motivational speaker. She is a professional skateboarder and surfer and has appeared in Hawaii Five-0, Walking Dead, and The Fear of the Walking Dead, and, and Cold Black. She also models lingerie and sportswear. Welcome, Kanye. Hi, nice. welcome. Could you describe yeah. um, your disability to our listeners? Yeah, so my disability is um, I don't. Ha- I was born without legs. I have no legs. Uh, I would so. just say like a birth defect because I do have three fingers on my right hand. Other and than that, everything else I have and it's all working and functioning. Yeah. And, and So I know you were, yeah, um, thanks for introducing that just because, you know, some, I'm sure a lot of people know you because you are quite the celebrity these days. But just for our, you know, other listeners. So for our next question, I know you were abandoned at a temple in Thailand. And I were was, ra- um, well, uh, when I went back to Thailand, I was abandoned on the side of the road across the street from temple school. And okay, so that's a myth. Um, so the other thing was what I heard from my mother that wasn't very classified or clarified as well as what she was saying until I went back to Thailand and they told me that um, September 13th was when I was found and when I got accepted into the hospital in uh, Pak Chung, Thailand. And uh, my birthday isn't September 13th, um, my real birthday is between June 10th um, and, and uh, July, um, the 1st of July or something like that. Because they said that I looked like I was about three months old when they found me. And mm-hmm. so they predict that my mother probably have kept me for a few months until she finally had to let me go. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's fascinating. Yes. So how has knowing all this new information suddenly impacted your life? Um, it helped me kind of remember my roots and kind of remember and, and um, going back my going back of where I came from and learning about what happened the you know 19 years ago you know since I came back to Thailand and it's really emotional and like really amazing and not just amazing but like um, really um, you know like I'm not an emotional type of person but like uh, the nurses there and all the people that helped me you know be the person of who I am today and it wasn't for them I would have been you know dead or uh, who knows what would happen but um, going back to Thailand and seeing all these amazing nurses and people who took care of me and the woman and the older gentleman who found me early morning on September of 1992 that day um, they they, you know, they, they were like, they're my family no matter what, because they're the one who first raised me. And so it was really cool. Like, I don't ever want to, they asked me if I ever want to find my birth parents or, you know, my birth mom at least. And I said, no, because I think certain things is meant to, you know, not, you know, my, my, my real parents are the people who took care of me till this day and have raised me. And I have no, 
um, I don't really want to like, I have no interest on finding my birth parents or my birth mom. Maybe, maybe one thing I would ask them is when, where, like, when is my actual real birthday in June? That's about it. So that way I can just know my horoscope scan. But other than that, no, not really. I don't really want to um, see my birth parents. I see. That is very interesting, especially since you have the choice to. So just transitioning maybe a little bit, although you are still in your mid-20s. You mentioned that your mid-20s was one of your lower points in life. Why was there such a low point in your life? My, my early 20s, 19s to my early 20s was my low point in life, not my middle 20s, in my, not my mid-20s. Um, my early 20s, uh, around that time was because I was transitioning to reality and I was, tra and I was being around with people who were very toxic to me that kind of led demons and bad spirits and bad energy, uh, you know, around me where I was being influenced in a bad and negative way. And um, also, I, you know, school was not for me. And I dropped out of college, like, you know, many times, more than once. And um, I felt like the things I was doing, I wasn't happy anymore, for instance, track racing. I mean, you know, I had my glory days back in high school and middle school. And like in Paralympics, I had my glory days in that. But I just feel like like, uh, I just wasn't really happy for what I was doing. And like, I didn't, I mean, like, I felt like I could have pushed harder to become more of that person, but, um, I wasn't happy about what I, and I wanted to do something else, you know? And, um, the thing was like, you know, uh, when you're young, you get distracted by people that shouldn't matter, you know? think that you, it matters to you, but shouldn't really matter to you. And you need to like focus on yourself. I was very easily being, um, uh, you know, persuade or doing something that, that was easily can be taken, taken, taken off of. And uh, that's what I kind of let it happen. But then I realized and learn as I, as the day goes by and as I got older and become more wiser of what I really wanted, and uh, I came out of that. So sometimes it's like when you feel stuck and you're around with negative energy and negative people that's around you, and it doesn't have to be just people, it has to be, you know, sometimes you can get off negative energy out of your body and out of your thoughts that can create something and it can make a bigger disruption or thoughts and things that creates of what, who the person you are really aren't at the time and so it's like you know it's life and I think it, I think everybody has has a point in life where they feel that they're lost sometimes and things aren't going like it's supposed to but I think um back then I wasn't plan on like having an ac accomplishment or something that like I'm trying to look forward to it was more of like my situation at the time and like where was I going? And I was just like, you know, it's, it's like, in, you know, like, uh, like lost and you're frozen and you feel like, okay, what should I do to get out of that? And so um, I did. And very uh, strong of you to be able to pull yourself out of that low point, because I feel like sometimes people get comfortable with being unhappy with their situation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, aside from being unhappy at that time, how did you know college and wheelchair racing just wasn't for you anymore and you want to do something else? Um, I think it's the fact of it's the same step. It's the same thing. It you just know, feels kind of like... You know, you're reaching for the gold and you're reaching for that medal. You're reaching to be the top and you're racing to win and you're racing for a purpose and you're racing because, you know, you want to. And um, I just feel like it's the same routine, like over and over again. It's just 
I feel like it's just the same concept. Like there's going to be someone that's always going to be better than you. And there's always going to be someone that like that are, you know, that you're probably better than them. But I just feel like wheelchair racing is just like the same concept, like the same thing that just happens every year. And I just feel like, I don't know, it wasn't me anymore. Like it was, it was a lot of fun, but like it just, you know, it costs money to get a whole new wheelchair every, you know, you need to get a new racing wheelchair every like five, six years because your body grows. Some people's body grows, you know, in a certain different way and their, and their chair might not fit them anymore. So that costs money. Mm -hmm. but, and it but, sounds like you just transitioned out of yeah. that part of your life as well. Yeah. And like, um, it was a lot of fun. I just, I just feel like, I just feel like, um, I just feel like it wasn't, I don't know, it wasn't me anymore. And I just feel like it was a lot, like more for like when I was younger and I wanted to discover myself out of that and, and, and process and, and, uh, like, uh, maybe navigate and put my money on something else other than track racing, because that's not my life, you know? And, uh, so I think uh, I really, so, but I was mostly really into fast and adrenaline, like downhill, like, you know, skateboarding and mono skiing type of thing. But I never really got the chance because I was busy focusing on the Paralympics back in the day for wheelchair racing instead of like what I could have done in deep down that I really wanted to do back then, but I couldn't. So. As we alluded to earlier with you doing all sorts of sports, skateboarding, surfing, break dancing, yeah. skiing, racing, modeling, you know, so many. What do you feel most free doing? Which activity makes you um, most free either from your disability or, you know, make you feel like a, um, a regular uh, able-bodied person? Or maybe you don't, you don't want to feel like an able-bodied person, period. Um, I don't, you know, for me, I, I always break the barriers of the word disabled, you know, disability. And, um, it's more of just inclusion for all, you know, and it's just like, I'm just my own life and my own way. I don't see myself as being disabled, but other people you know, that describe me is I am disabled. And I love all the sports that I do, like the monoskiing, the surfing and the skateboarding. Um, but the most that makes me feel free if I was looking at it in a different aspect is would have to probably be skateboarding because like skateboarding is, um, you know, an everyday lifestyle where it's like, you know, I don't have like, I'm not just waking up and then I'm going right into the water right away. You know, you have to go to the beach to get there and then you go in the water and stuff like that. And, you know, you're not always going to, you know, the water, you're not going to be surfing while you're like in the mall or like you're not going to be surfing when you're like out and about somewhere else that doesn't have a body of water and you, and you're not going to be mono skiing in the snow, you know, there's no, there's no, you know, so I feel like, I guess if you talk about it in that way, I would have to say skateboarding allows me to um, feel more free of wherever I am and, and wherever I go. And um, it makes me have the ability and, and the adaptable to just um, like maneuver the way how I want to and make and, you know, and not, you know, have, have the, you know, not have no limits on that. Have, and, I read an article where you once said, I don't need legs to feel sexy. Has mm -hmm. not having legs ever made you not sexy? If yes, how did you transition from that negative attitude to a very positive and confident attitude? I think um, that headline has to do with how I subscribe stuff. I never really... <laughs> 
Uh, the way how like the magazine and articles, they kind of like said that in a weird way. I don't know why, but um, I, I mean, sure. I think I am sexy with or without legs, <laughs> you know, uh, I, um, to clarify that of what they put on the headlines. Um, did you actually say that or did they change no, it? The, 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 what, do you, what do you mean they um, worded in a weird way? They word it in a way that they want to to just get people to look at the article. Like I didn't say that. They they put that out there, you know. I don't I I you know, like I don't need legs. And if I do, you know, I don't need legs and it's okay if I do have legs to feel good about myself, like being confident into my own body. That's what it is. And um, yeah, sure, I am, you know, I can be sexy if I wanted to um, or don't want to be sexy, you know, <laughs> but like, uh, I think it's just more of being comfortable in my own skin that encourage other women to show who they really are physically, not just mentally, but like, you know, show, you know, in a wheelchair or just, you know, whatever figures and physical abilities that they have or what size they are or how tall or big or short they are. I think people should be comfortable in their own skin because everything that you see in Hollywood isn't what to expect of an everyday life. Nobody looks like that, you know, it, like, and realistically, like, you know, <laughs> so it's, it's a good way to just, like, we need to bring out more of, the real, the reality, the real person, the real you, the real me, the real, you know, person out, you know, out there and, it's, you know, and show more of who the real us really are because, you know, no, the tabloids, magazines and all those, you know, headlines and um, society wants, society wants us to look and do a certain way, pretty much exploit us and manipulate us. And society, I feel like they want to show you, okay, you have to look this way, you know, or like, oh, look this way to look more attractive and like, you know, using people and then try to Photoshop that stuff. Um, in and another article, and maybe you said things that maybe you didn't, so you can feel free to clarify. You are quoted to have said, I love showing people what beauty can look like. Yes, and that so is true. Yes. That is true. Okay, yes. so what does beauty look like to you? You know, beauty looks like to me is, um, it's not just physical. For me, it's just like people with really good personality is what is very attractive, of course, of, you know, being a good person. Not just being a good person, but just, but just like being real to themselves. That's what makes, you know, everyone's beautiful in their own way. But also the fact that... Um, I think everybody has a different outlooks in life. And I love seeing people, you know, I'm not selfish. I don't do it for my own intentions. And I don't help people for my own intentions. And I don't do things for my own intentions. And I, I'm very humble. And not just that, but a lot of people say that, um, and also I see myself as I look into other people's pursuit of happiness and I look into other people's um, uh, career and success and I appreciate that and and love that no matter what and I, I'm not I'm not selfish on that like I don't I don't put myself out there and do certain things that makes me become more of a you know for me to be bigger than everybody else or try to be big than anybody else, you know, and, you know, everybody, everybody goes through things even like worse in times in life and become better. And, you know, some people just has it all no matter what, but I don't judge on that. Like there's no judgments on that. And um, I think people are just like, you know, everybody, I think they're beautiful in their own way as in they are very, like, how can I say this? Beautiful in their own way. What I'm trying to describe is that they're they're very uh, unique 
and it's different and people do things that comes out as very intriguing and interesting out into the world and you know, and I allow that and people should be more accepted to that. That's what I'm trying to say. And I definitely agree that you uh, live your life in that way. I remember when I was at, out at, I think we were at a sports uh, camp in Eugene yes. somewhere. And yeah. I was just super uncomfortable. It was my first time going to one of those camps and staying away with the majority uh, of the people with disabilities, you know, as you know, our high school was mm-hmm. mostly able-bodied people. Um, I was like, I was the only person in a wheelchair. I think you were as well, perhaps. Mm-hmm. And so I was super uncomfortable. And I just m- remember you talking to everybody, no matter what shape, size, yes, um, color, and just was in awe. I think, I think, I think, I think, I think yeah, I think I also came up to you and tried to say hi. I think that was the thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just remember like, whoa, I wish I can be like her and just be so mm-hmm. comfortable. And instead of feeling so uncomfortable and so um, insecure at that moment. Yeah, I know. So mm-hmm. next, we're gonna, I'm going to ask you some questions about being a celebrity. So now that you are a celebrity yourself, what are some myths and misconceptions that everyday people have about celebrities do you think from an insider angle i would have to say you know that one time in 2015 you know of course um headlines are going to exploit people and people are going to you know no matter what but um they were just like there's one part where they were saying how much money i was making when um it was not how much i was making and i don't know how that got out there but it made it really complicated for people who were close to me who actually knows me and questioned me about like Kanye you make this much money and blah 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 I was like no like you know and it made it like really difficult for you know people that was close by me and like you know and it made them question because like you know I was I was like living with a friend at the time and and like um and it's like when somebody when somebody founds out that you've been making this much money when you really haven't and because you know it's a lie that headlines and people you know say to get money off of like their article you know people would question Uh, the headline says this lingerie model makes one thousand dollars a day and i'm like wait what like it took me my by surprise and i never said anything like that i don't know how that got out there and it did, and that what made things really complicated, and like I was really mad, and I was like, dude, I need to do something about this to take this out, you know? You know, when you do get out there in life, and you do have a lot of connections and people that you meet along the way, there's gonna be people who actually knows you and who actually sees you and who the way you are. And there are gonna be people that's gonna be like that, that wants to be your friends for a certain intention, or they are going to hate you. So what are the pros and cons of being a celebrity? I feel like you cover some of the cons already. You know, I think the pro of being it is that, like, you know, people look up to you in a good way. You know, they can also look up to you in a bad way. Who knows, who knows what it is? But I think the, the good aspect of it is, like, you get connections or more opportunities, and people will see you as an icon. And, and or an idol or something that they look up on. And um, I really I really like when people see that I, I can help them or like just motivate them or inspire them. And it makes me happy that they're happy when they see me and that I'm doing something good, for, you know, not just doing something good, but like I can help them for their life in a way. And, and so that way they don't feel like they're alone in my with my story and if they need to talk to me they can come to me no matter what I'm not going to be I'm not going to hold somebody back you know I'm not the type of person that's not going to talk to you just because I feel like I'm more better than you because I think that's stupid I think that um when people become more and more famous or like not just famous but have more followers and you know those Instagram bullshit and all that they feel like some people just won't want to talk to you because they feel, you know, they just feel better than you in a way. And I think that's stupid. 
<laughs> to be honest, you know, there's going to be ego that comes a long ways with those type of people. And, um, and, and I think that would, that would have to be probably the con, you know, because they're, because I guess like the bad side about it is that, you know, you don't know if you're going to be in, if you're going to be the type of person that like, you like, like, um, things come and go, you know, you're not going to have what you want to be and you're not going to have like cer certain things aren't going to go out to play. And um, so you probably won't have enough work as much work. So you probably can't like um, put your, you know, I don't know, like put yourself back on the pedestal. But like thing is, I don't really care for that. But I think the I think the negative about that is that people would speculate you on many different controversies. But again, I don't really care what people think because the only true person I know is myself. And um, and I I think I think the only downfall is is um, I think um, just the downfall is people who were close to you or pe people who are who knows you and who's been your close friends or been your friends, they probably step back away because they feel like they're not, somehow they feel like, you know, they, they're not important anymore or something like that. And, or they feel kind of weird or jealous or not just jealous, but like, but like, oh, you're this person now. Like they speculate and they assume things negative about you on becoming a person. So I think that's the, probably that's probably the downside, you know, like, like I had, I had some friends be like, you're too famous for me. And I'm like, I'm not, I only have 60,000 followers, <laughs> you know, like, like what? Like, I feel like in Instagram, Instagram is definitely a place where people just want to have their liking and popularity. And I think it's stupid. I don't, I like, to be honest, I think, I think you don't matter unless like an in Instagram world and in Instagram world. I just feel like you don't matter unless you have like millions of followers. Sure. You have hundred thousands and stuff like that, but anybody can have that. I could, I could have a hundred thousand by like, you know, whatever, you know, it's whatever, but I feel like people don't matter in, in Instagram unless you have a million at least. And like, that's why I feel like Instagram is just, I, Instagram is just a tool for business and meeting people for connections um, in the business world and put, and also putting your profile and, and documents out there. But I just feel like Instagram also has a downward spiral is popularity contest and like all those stupid Inst you know, like Instagram models and stuff like um, that. And so I think you mentioned in, um, previously that mm -hmm. that you never had trouble with dating um, and that you were a popular kid in high school. What advice do you have to share with other individuals with disabilities who do struggle with shame, awkwardness, acceptance, beauty mm -hmm. when it comes to dating and finding somebody intimate? I would have to say, you know, there's going to be, there's, okay, sorry. Uh, I would have to say that um, there's going to be times where it's like, it, that's not going to happen. Like, you know, that's not going to happen for everybody. For me as, you know, being in a relationship right now, um, I think it's just like, you know, I don't, it's not like I'm perfect because I'm not perfect. And there's going to be, you know, there was times where, you know, I, I had dating and I had guys, but that doesn't mean that, you know, they came into for, for being in love or like whatever it is and, um, or being in a relationship. And I think that, even for myself, it w it's hard to, you know, date because even though like it was easy, it felt easy for me. But at the same time, I just feel like, you know, there's intentions where when you're with a person and um, you both have to understand that, uh, you know, it's if you become in a relationship with somebody who are different than you you you're taking a lot 
onto yourself to be part of this relationship. As in like people that has nothing wrong with them. Like, I mean, like in physical form. And um, I think knowing that you have to tell them that, you know, you know, I'm very capable. I have no legs and like, you know, and, and telling them that, you know, I am different and, you know, and all that. And like, I do use skateboard or a wheelchair to get around sometimes and all that. And, the, and then they allow, and then, you know, they have to accept that and they have to allow themselves for that. But I think for me is that like, I, I'm very free and I'm very out there already where they don't see my, they don't see me as having any legs. So I think it's just a connection that connects with it where um, they just, I don't know, like I asked, I asked the people I've dated before how they feel on dating me and um, they don't really see like it. I mean, I, I said, like, be honest, you know, some of them said that it was kind of, kind of awkward, not awkward, but like different because they're not used to, it's the fact of being stare at sometimes, or they're not used to, um, like, okay, this, this is different, you know, it's, it's, it shocks them a little bit, but at the same time, they, they, uh, they're like, whatever, you know, they're like, no, I see her as Kanye and just like, you know, she gets around just fine with or without, you know. Do you and usually date people who are able body or who have a disability? And if you have experiences with both, what are the challenges and the positive aspects of each? Um, I have dated one person who was in a wheelchair. Actually, um, yeah, I dated one person who no wait okay wait i dated not in a relationship wise i think i just dated them for a couple weeks but it was just like a dating and i date two people who are in wheelchairs um i had a thing for one person without legs <laughs> and most of most of most of the relationships that are serious relationship i've been in they are able bodies and they do have legs but the people who i dated weren't you know uh, they well most the okay people the the four serious relationship that I was in that I call my boyfriend you know um, they they do have legs and they are able and then the people who I ha they they I only dated and wasn't getting into relation like serious relationship just dated or just seeing each other some of them were in a wheelchair and and didn't yeah. have legs. That was our last like, question, and um, thank you so much for participating in the podcast, Kanye. No, nah, no problem.